everyone was surprised to see them there. Their opponents were supposed to win, but the Toronto Ultra did like not ah! care. Back in 2020, when talking about the top teams in the Call of Duty League, you'd be hard pressed to find the Ultra in the same breath as the Atlanta phase. But 2021 has been a different story entirely. Going into the final of the stage two major, it was definitely a David versus Goliath situation. You have FaZe who had won the previous major. They were the heavy favorites. They looked fantastic. Like they had no weaknesses at all in any game mode. And then you had a Toronto Ultra team that was very streaky, very hit or miss. I don't think that they thought Toronto had a chance. I think it was like 0.2% of the people that did the CDL pickums had Toronto winning, which is like, it was like seven people or something. But they proved that, you know, we're here. We have the talent. We have the teamwork. We know how to, you know, we know how to win. And that's what they did. This is the genesis of a rivalry. The story of the Toronto Ultra finding their footing, clenching their fists, and punching the schoolyard bully square in the mouth. If there was one word to describe it, it was definitely shocking. Twenty twenty was overall not the Ultras year. A rough start and inconsistent performances placed them on the back foot. Sometimes they were hot, other times not. One of the more consistent players on an inconsistent team was Methods. When the team was able to rally around him, they were able to make things happen. Methods taking care of business, that's where he go in as he finds kill number seven. But a slew of in-season roster changes ensured cohesion and unity were in short supply. Bands coming in for medals, Metals comes back in replacing Looney, then Classic gets benched for Kleenex, and then Classic comes back in replacing Metals. Yeah, consistency was lacking for the Ultra. Ultra ended the season with 11 wins, 13 losses, and a home series victory. Then, at the 2020 Championship Tournament, they pulled in a fifth, sixth place finish. Meanwhile, the Atlanta phase ended their regular season at the top of the scoreboard with a 26 and seven record. They went undefeated during launch weekend, won two home series events, and took second at the championship. Fast forward to 2021, and due to the pandemic, Call of Duty League was to be played online and broken into stages. A stage consisted of three weekends of play leading into a fourth weekend. Enter the Ultra, with a starting roster of Kami, Kleenex, Bants, and Methods that failed to perform in Stage 1. A 1-4 one stage record put them in the loser's bracket for the Stage 1 Major, and despite two wins, they were sent home after a 3-0 loss to the LA Thieves. So, as usual, maybe even expected, the Ultra made a roster change for Stage 2. Insight came in for Methods. I think Insight just fits better with the team not only in-game, but out of game. I think the chemistry is just there. And when you have that, when you're really able to be on the same page in and out of the game, it just makes everything flow. Everyone else on the team seemed to have really improved. And I don't know if that was because of Insight, which it very well could have been, but it seemed like everything went right for them at the right time. Despite being 3-0'd by FaZe in week one of stage two, the Ultra secured an overall 2-3 record to get them into the upper bracket of the stage two major, giving them two chances to make it all the way. A win against Optic paved the way for a loss against FaZe and a seemingly impossible task was set to the Ultra. Win three matches in a row to get to the finals. Up first, a 3-0 win over the LA Thieves. 20 seconds left on a hill, you're rotating from P2 to P3. If you get caught, you spawn out, you can get battered on the rotations on this map. So that's a focus point, but maybe for Toronto, the opening break even. Then the Ultra dispatched the Rocker 3-1. It's just Dandy now. Dandy is in a bit of trouble. And they're able to take him down. Fans with a great round from Ultra to go up. And then the toughest test before phase, a very strong Dallas Empire, that was ousted three to one. But he cannot do it, Ultra behind the brakes! Get to a grand final! And then, the grand finals, the final boss, Atlanta phase. Toronto Ultra defying expectations and making it to this final for Kami, Kleenex, Insight, and Bance. 
The Cinderella story continues. The slipper fits. She's going to the ball, but will she make it home before the clock strikes 12? That's the question. Chance for their opponents, though, Atlanta Fays. Of course, the reigning champions coming into this major. The team that, quite frankly, everyone wants to see fail and everyone is gunning to try to beat. Do you think Ultra even have a chance? The insight experiment for Toronto was working so far. The roster was playing better. They were more cohesive. They were more in control. So it was time for the Ultra as a team to finish what they started. All they had to do was win five maps, but this was the Atlanta phase. So this was no small task. Let's bring Enable in to break down the biggest moments of the series, starting off with game two. Things are incredibly difficult for FaZe. Insight just so patient. He's seen it busy do it once. He shut him down the first time. Insight's obviously playing very passive once the player's life because they did have a man advantage. But Insight too clean. Oh. S&D prowess. Dang, okay. He was just kind of in the perfect spot uh, at the perfect time. And he kind of knew that FaZe had to, they had to make a play because they were man down. Just insane stuff right now from Insight. Progression through. He's able to secure that, but then BZ clears him off with a two piece, and just like that, any momentum he had on offense, BZ is going to be there to shut it down. BZ just makes an absolute play. His movement was fantastic. BZ's ability to take over and really just relieve any pressure it is crucial. Full cap, and it doesn't look like anyone from Ultra is going to be bargaining for it. Phase, they win the offensive round, and now we go to the decider. This is a huge round. You know, Toronto Ultra are up 1-0 in this map. I love what Bance is doing. He's basically just forcing all of Atlanta phase in that back left spawn and really being annoying. Because uh, he knows there's not that much time left on the clock. He gets a huge kill on Simp in the one-on-one. -on -one, and he's just doing his thing. That's why he backs up. He knows exactly where they're going to spawn. Switches to the Krig. And he has a free gunfight. He's just being a pest. You know, a as you can see, all he did was stay alive, get a couple kills, but block that back right spawn. That was just a great overall play out of Vance. Huge kills, great patience. Right now, super clean selling though. Can't win the gunfight, but the trades are certainly in. They're trying to blink, they're trying to go yeah. everywhere, and Simp kills them all. Wow, that's fantastic shots out of Simp. And this is one of the, the situations where there are players who can do that purely off of gun skill. I mean, he's still going, not missing a bullet right now with the 74 you killing at all ranges, but caught one or two off guard, and then he just went on a spree. Keeps the spree alive. So right here, this is a huge round and a huge map. It, the series is 2-2. Baze is up 2-0 in S&D, but they're a man down. Beasy singed up from the Semtex. Meanwhile on the street, Sim. Oh my Sim. Can he find three? No chance, Sim. Not a hope in hell. Can he get all of them? That was unbelievable because gun skill right there was phenomenal but the fact that he knew where the players were going to be coming from and catching them off guard allowed him to get the four piece and secure the win this is it for phase pull it back now force the game nine or lose major two to the fairy tale that truly is toronto ultra right now really from both teams and while you actually advance he's just playing aggressive trying to make the plays he finds the opening Simto inside the Ooh. actual hill can find at least one player, but obviously for the moment, back and forth game. Back and forth indeed. Even towards the final moments, this is not bad time for Toronto to try to chip away from the opponent. From the top rope comes Kleenex. I mean, here we're, we're just getting down to the wire. Ultra has a, about a 40 point lead and they are on game point. Down and Ultra have got it. And Ultra can win the tournament right here. You can see that they're doing everything to just secure this game, secure the spawns. They don't want it to go to another map. He goes as fast as he can, can't find the kill. Insight still locked. It's 10 seconds for the win now. This is it. Sim's gonna contest, he's gonna get cut to pieces. And what do you know? The greatest underdog going into the tournament. They take the best team in the league the whole way and they get the job done. Not only do they do it at a respawn, they truly are ultra as Their teamwork, was on point. I don't think anyone had Toronto Ultra winning, but in that last minute, you saw how good their teamwork was. They were team shooting everyone. They were playing damn near perfect when it comes to fundamentally. And it's a well-deserved win overall.
The Stage 2 Major was an impossible run made possible by the Toronto Ultra, and it's paid dividends for the team. In the end, the Ultra have catapulted themselves into the conversation of top-tier Call of Duty teams, and they fought a rival in phase along the way. They really are ultra as fuck.